Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to share with you all a very interesting but hidden career opportunities in science communication. Something you may not have heard of before because personally I think it's not one of those conventional careers. Make sure you watch this video till the end because I'm going to explain what is science communication and how exactly I managed to secure a paid internship in a prestigious organization in London. Also, how I got rejected by the way but eventually got the internship. But before that, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I bring very informative and useful videos for you all. Your little support will keep me motivated. Also, also, don't forget to hit the like button because that way this video reaches to as many people as possible. Without further ado, let's begin now. I'm going to divide this video into four parts. First, I'm going to tell you what is science communication and what is it you do if you are a science communicator. Then I will tell you how I managed to secure a paid internship in a prestigious organization in London and how almost I didn't get this internship. Then I will tell you, can you become a science communicator after graduating with a master's degree in psychology? And finally, is science communication the right career path for you? As the name suggests, and in very simple and obvious words, science communication is about communicating science. Wow, that was easy. Maybe you have never paid attention to this before, but science communication is all around you and one of the best mediums is none other than YouTube. There are so many YouTube channels out there that are talking about science, communicating science in the simplest possible language so that concepts are easily understood by those who do not have a background in science. Science communication is very important considering how easy it is these days to distort facts for the wrong reasons. I don't have to take you many centuries back, but the most common and the recent example is the COVID-19 pandemic, when in the name of science, there was so much misinformation going on globally. And for these reasons, a role of a good science communicator is very, very important. Careers in science communication have started emerging these days. You can find that some universities have started offering courses in science communication, which I think is very, very good. If you have been following my channel for some time now, then you must have seen that I've also made videos on psychological research and this is science communication only. So what exactly do science communicators do? I think science communicators are like storytellers, where they take certain scientific discoveries, certain concepts, and they turn them into these compelling narratives that people can easily understand and they can get inspired. And they do this through different mediums, such as YouTube videos, podcasts, blog posts, etc. In other words, science communicators try to bridge the gap between the scientific community and the general public. And uh, their role is very, very important. I think as a science communicator, it is not enough that you are saying the right words. I think it is also important to connect with people so that myths are debunked and scientific literacy at the end of the day is promoted. Now, talking about how I managed to get a paid internship in a prestigious organization in London and how almost I didn't get this internship. So during my master's degree, I realized that I love talking about science. I can talk about science all day. But at that time, I did not know that a thing called science communication even exists. And one day I was going through Twitter, I was scrolling Twitter and I found an interesting paid internship opportunity in science communication in London. And I started reading about it and I realized first it matched with my interest in science communication and second I had some relevant background in science communication related work. So without losing much time I applied for this internship as soon as I could. I only had to submit a one page cover letter explaining why I am interested in this internship, what experience do I have, what skills I will bring to the organization, you know, all of the usual stuff. And also I had to submit my updated resume. Honestly, I wasn't hopeful even 1% because of my experience of getting rejections for some time now. Uh, but one day to my surprise, I received an email and it said that I have been shortlisted for the interview. I was invited for the interview. Obviously, it was a wonderful news for me. Now, one thing that I can say based on my experience of applying to so, so, so many jobs is that if you find something that's even slightly interesting to you, that's even slightly relevant to your background, apply, apply for the job, apply for the internship, whatever it is. 
don't think twice because the worst that could happen is that you will be rejected but you don't want to lose the opportunity coming back i tried to prepare for the interview as much as i could as i have enough experience now in giving job interviews i made a list of all the anticipated questions meaning questions i could get asked during the interview um i prepared answer for every single question i could think of um i could find on the internet now this is another important thing about the job interviews uh prepare your answers in advance and practice 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 a lot i don't recommend that you memorize your answers like you do for your exams but have a general structure ready in your mind have a general idea as to what you're going to speak during the interview Everyone is nervous during the interview no matter how many interviews you give you are always going to be at least a bit nervous but when you are prepared in advance when you have a general idea as to what you're going to speak during the interview then you will be more calm you will be more relaxed and you will be able uh, to give a good interview remember i was traveling the day i had my interview uh there were two people from the organization who took my interview i think they were wonderful interviewers because they did not make me feel uh nervous not even for a single minute rather i felt very relaxed i felt very calmed uh i did not feel like i was giving an interview for an internship i was i just felt like i was sharing my passion for science communication with two people and in hindsight now that i think about it i feel like it was the best interview i've ever given so far interview lasted for about 30 minutes i guess and i was told that i'd be told of the decision like whether i'm accepted or rejected by the end of the day now as promised by the end of the day like in the evening i was i received an email and uh, that email said unfortunately they cannot offer me the internship obviously it was very heartbreaking um but they told me that if something comes up they'd let me know but I was not very hopeful what was going to happen. Once again after one and a half months when I was traveling to India and I was waiting at the airport waiting to board my flight I received a completely unexpected email from one of the interviewers and they asked me in their email whether I'm still interested in the internship. Obviously I was interested and I said yes. That was just wow. I was not expecting that. And this thing has like this particular experience has taught me one thing that never never lose hope in your life you never know what is waiting for you around the corner you never know how surprising life can be so once again never 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 lose hope let's talk now how and if you can become a science communicator after graduating with a master's degree in psychology or any other degree in general as i said in the beginning of this video that science communication is about sharing scientific knowledge scientific information with a wide variety of audiences such as general public policy makers and even the scientific community science communication is not limited to stem fields which means science technology engineering and mathematics but it also extends to other disciplines as well such as psychology and yes There are career opportunities in science communication, scientific journalism and medical writing after graduating with a master's degree. Are a science communicator if you have your own YouTube channel or blog and you talk about science and you share that knowledge with people. Some people enter the field of science communication after an undergraduate degree. So it is not mandatory that you need to have a postgraduate degree such as master's or PhD in order to work in science communication. I think that just depends on the kind of job you are applying to so always be mindful of what the requirements are there's no set route to a career in science communication but it is very important that you have experience so gaining experience is very important as i said earlier that if you have your own youtube channel or blog and you talk about science and you share that knowledge with people then it would be considered science communication only and yes it would be considered an important experience If you are a university student then maybe you could look for opportunities in your university such as any societies in science communication any journal clubs student led groups and that would also give you good opportunity to get gather or gain some experience now comes the final part of this video is science communication the right career path for you well i think that depends from person to person i for one absolutely love talking about science 
with people who have a background in science and also those who don't have a background in science. So before you go about jumping into any opportunity, I think it is very important that you take some time and you just think about it. For example, I didn't know that a thing called science communication even exists until my master's degree and it is only because I gave myself some time and I thought about it that now I can say that I love science communication. There are two things that you must think about. First and foremost is, are you seriously passionate about science? Is this something you usually never get tired of doing? Do you feel satisfied that today have, you have learned something new in any scientific discipline and now you want to share that knowledge with people? If you have said yes to all of these questions, then you are the right person for this. If you have said no, then maybe, just maybe, science communication is not the right career path for you and maybe you can explore other careers and decide what eventually interests you. Second thing is whether you have creative and good communication skills. Talking about science is not a piece of cake, trust me. Concepts in science can be really complicated to understand. So you need to be very creative and you need to have good communication skills in order to explain all those concepts in the simplest possible language so that people can easily understand it. If I get all technical videos, with you all and suppose I start showing you all the complicated diagrams, figures, big numbers, then it is obvious that it is going to be challenging to understand. Sometimes scientists themselves find graphs, figures and big numbers really complicated to understand. 